Okay, party people, this video is going to be a rant. That's right, we're ranting. Ranting? Is ranting a word? Rant. Ranting. Ranting. I'm from Texas, so we say ranting. And well, this is going to be pretty straightforward because in this video, we're going to be talking about the garage door opener motors that I have seen throughout the years that have been a complete and utter failure. Let's party. If you have one of these motors or if you've installed one of these motors in the past, please don't take this video personal. I'm just talking about the garage door opener motors that in my experience I have seen that have not been great in quality, that have failed in one way or another, or pretty much those little ticks and nuances that did not make it a great product. Okay, without further ado, here is the first one on the list, and it happens to be the product from Viper. That's right, Viper Garage Door Opener Motor Systems, or how they say it, Garage Door Opener Systems. I don't know if you can see that right there, Viper. Yeah, this unit is basically the Morantech. It is a Morantech M45, probably the M47 or the M4500. Uh, one of the updated versions, I think this was more the E version, and quite frankly, it's got failure written all over it. I can't tell you how many times I come into a situation where a customer is dealing with this motor and there's something off with the limits, there's something off with the logic board, there's something off with the trolley carriage, and that baffles me because this is basically a Morantec product, and Morantec for... In most cases, I would say, they're they're pretty good product, but whatever they were doing to the Viper product just seemed like it was a bit off, like it just wasn't the same quality. And these were one of the units that I tend to find that every time I go into a customer's home and I see them and I'm trying to diagnose it and trying to repair it, it just it's just not worth it. Quite frankly, I just simply offer a replacement garage door opener and that usually does the trick. All right, next up on our list is the Wayne Dalton Quantum Drive and Pro Drive Garage Door Opener Motors. And these motors, quite frankly, wow, they were built like a beast. Very similar to what you would probably find in the commercial grade garage door opener motors. In fact, they have these rail assemblies that are super sturdy, super clanky, super loud. In fact, you could deadlift the garage door opener with this rail and get a fantastic workout. Unfortunately, unfortunately, these motors did not stand up the test of time. They were just too noisy for customers. And quite frankly, they just didn't hold up very well. Look at how, in this case, this thing is about to like fall off a part of the seams. I don't know if you guys can see that there from the top view. It's heavy for sure. It's heavy as all get out. And uh, well, look at that. I mean, you know, who wants this? Who really wants to have a product that after several years just starts to break by itself? Um, you can tell that these motors, although they had a relatively smart design, uh, they had a pretty strong and sturdy gear assembly there. And I rarely found the need to repair them. But once the unit was done, that is, once the unit was broken, gone, something was uh, bad with the logic boards, something within the limit sensors, that was it. I mean, pretty much you just had to chunk this thing. And it was just one of those motors that I had to put on this list because quite frankly, I replaced these motors time in and time again because they're just not that good. <laughs> Okay, party people, you knew this one was coming. This is the model 1024 Genie Pro. This motor almost single-handedly gave Genie the worst reputation for garage door opener manufacturing. And quite frankly, it was a really bad unit. There was something to this motor that the gear assembly would go out on. The rails were made poorly. The logic board was really bad. Sometimes it wouldn't hold its travel settings, its travel limits. What else can I say? I mean, this is the type of garage door opener motor, much like uh, 
Like, you guys remember that Samsung Note phone that kept blowing up? Yeah, this is the type of product that could just create a stigma and just really leave a stale taste for a specific manufacturer brand. And so when Genie made the right decision, pulled the plug on this product, decided to go a different route, quite frankly, I was very grateful for that because then they ended up coming out with the 2028, the 2128, and all the great motors that Genie makes now. So if you have this product, you know, Try not to dedicate too much money or time into it. The best thing you need to do is just have a dealer install it, uh, replace it for you. The Genie 1024 um, still might have some parts where you could repair this particular motor, but I highly don't recommend that. I highly recommend against that, in fact. Uh, I think you're better off just going with a brand new Genie motor or just a brand new garage door opening motor. <laughs> And well, in this next category, we're not going to be highlighting a specific model, but we will be highlighting a specific brand and actually a feature to this brand. You didn't think LiftMaster was going to get off this list. We're going to be talking about the LiftMaster 390 and 315 megahertz radio frequency. And these radio frequencies were notorious for having remote transmitter interruption. Sometimes the radio frequencies would simply go out. You'd have to change the logic board in order to get your remotes to work again, or you would have to attach an adapter to be able to get an extended radio frequency or maybe a dual band channel. Quite frankly, it was a headache to be able to get these LiftMaster Garage Door Opener radio frequencies to work properly. Now the orange or red learn code button is the 390 frequency and the purple learn code button is the 315. So if you have either and you're having radio transmitter frequency issues, there are some things that you can do to help you extend the range, to help you get better, stronger signal. But in my experience, it's just better to go with a brand new motor because what you're going to be spending in pretty much what could be an adapter or an extender or perhaps a, an 888LM uh, or the 889LM uh, for the, in the case of the 315, I think even in the 390 um, learn code button, either way, you just want to kind of think about what you're spending dollars for dollars to help your solution or to figure out a solution in the case of these radio frequencies. So these frequencies uh, are definitely on my list of fails. Okay, sorry Genie, but I had to add this one in. Now, in the beginning, the Genie Accelerator was a pretty popular product. It was one of their first DC motors and quite frankly, the accelerator feature, that is the garage door opener, would open tremendously fast to pretty much get you going on your day. Now, I have my thoughts about that, um, but what we have here right now is the Genie Accelerator 2. And although the first accelerator was not too bad, the Accelerator 2 didn't do a very good job in being the sophomore product. In fact, this particular model was plagued with software issues. If you had bad balance to your garage door, this motor limits, the motor limits, I should say, the digital motor limits would just be thrown off completely. It was again, one of those uh, designs that I think G had a strong idea behind it. I know they've worked out the kinks now because the accelerators that exist today and I think the Mach Force it has does a better job, uh, but in essence, it just wasn't that great in the beginning. So putting the Genie Accelerator 2 on this list is mainly because, again, it just didn't work well in those circumstances where if you had bad balance to your door, or if your springs were bad, or if there was something wrong with your door system, this motor was definitely going to detect it and thus create problems. So at the end of the day, I consider it a fail mainly because I think Genie could have done a better job in honing in on the digital uh, limit software settings. And I think they have already, but uh, this one definitely gets on the list because of that sophomore effort being that it just wasn't that strong. And well, last but not least, and I don't have this motor on my uh, table right now, 
But that motor, which is the probably utmost tremendously notorious fail in the garage door opener lineup, is the Ryobi product. Yeah, party people, that Ryobi garage door opener motor was the worst. It was a dumpster fire. Quite frankly, I don't know how Ryobi uh, even thought that this product was going to make any sense. First of all, it was very clunky in its design, and that's because they decided to go with, check this out, a modular garage door opener motor. What does that mean? Modular basically means you can attach, modify, or put specific uh, features or attachments to get your garage door opener to do a little bit more than just open up your garage door. In fact, it allowed you to put an air compressor, a fan, a battery backup, a camera, um, a uh, kitchen mate, you should be able to chill your wine. It had just all sorts of features to this particular motor. And as you add that up, you come to realize, hey, that's a lot of power being drawn from this appliance that's, you know, on 120 volt uh, circuit. And then you think, well, wait a minute. If it's drawing all this power at one time, could that affect the operation of the motor? I, I don't know what it was, but every time I came into a situation where a Ryobi motor was bad, it was usually the logic board. And that logic board probably didn't have enough smarts, probably didn't have enough programming to work out all the kinks and figure out what it was doing at the right time. At the end of the day, Ryobi had a great idea. They really did have a great idea in thinking outside the box and making a garage door opener motor uh, much more functional than just opening and closing your door. Unfortunately, the decisions that they made were just too much for this particular product. I think for it being a modular garage door opener, of course, a battery backup, a camera, things like that do kind of make sense. But all the other air compressors, all the other pretty much components that you were gonna find on this motor that um, were supposed to make your man cave, your garage, the ultimate garage, uh, the ultimate workspace, it just was not executed properly. And thus with the Ryobi product, there was a lot of things to it that whenever I see it at a customer's home and I try and diagnose it for them, I even call their customer line. It seems like I get the, the same guy over and over in that customer line. And poor guy, I mean, you know, he, he's just basically trying to do his job. But the stale taste, the bad experience that the Ryobi product left for a lot of customers I think it's safe to say that they're probably not going to come out with another garage door opener like this. And if they do, man, kudos to Ryobi for wanting to think outside the box. And again, party people, this video is just a rant. Quite frankly, it's just my experience that I've had with these garage door opener motors out in the field. And at the same rate, just wanting to give you some insight on what was wrong with them, how sometimes maybe it makes more sense to replace your garage door opener as opposed to investing good money into a bad situation on a bad garage door opener motor. So by no means do I bash on these companies, um, making it seem that, you know, that they're the worst. Quite frankly, they all had good ideas. They all had something that started out as a good idea. It, how it was executed, how it was implemented, just doesn't uh, translate to the same experience. So at the end of the day, the pro tips, techniques, and ideas in this video should not be considered law or infallible. Why? Number one, I'm nobody. Number two, it is important that you understand your garage door opener needs. In fact, not all garage door systems are the same. Thus, it's important for you to understand the mechanics, the needs of your garage door, and if you don't have any knowledge, or you don't care to have that knowledge, reach out to a contractor because that's what they're there for. Now, not all contractors are created equal. In fact, a good contractor will always go above and beyond to provide a great customer service experience. And one way they can do that is by checking out channel sponsor Workies. Now, Workies is an all-in-one business management and communication software that allows home service businesses to dispatch their technician with an easy drag and drop feature and straight into their calendar. In fact, they can even utilize Workies to accept payments out in the field. 
WorkEase makes inventory management super easy and provides customizable forms and documents. In fact, leave those paper spreadsheets, paper invoices, whiteboards to those other contractors that quite frankly are not willing to get with the times. In fact, WorkEase empowers your home service business to get jobs done in less time, grow faster, and increase revenue. So if that sounds like a party to you, then please click the link in the description to get 30% off your first three months and a big thanks to Workies for being the sponsor of the channel. In addition to that, if you own one of the garage door openers on this list and by no means is that experience a party to you, well then please check out some of the affiliate links down below. We'll provide some suggestions on some great garage door opener motors that we've reviewed and quite frankly, offer a better experience. That's going to be it for this one, party people. I want to thank you so much for watching this video and parting with me now. Check out this other video right here that can provide you more pro tips and tech reviews for your residential garage door needs. And as always, y'all stay safe.